Hey guys, let me know what you think by liking and commenting, and it really helps me and this channel out when you subscribe, so please click that button. Thanks a bunch! All right, by now, this uh, review is a little bit late, I get that, but uh, for those of you who are still wanting to these, or I, I don't know if they're gonna make a second run of these, but these are the Comet cars from Rapido. No, a lot of people were looking forward to them. I'm pretty sure that Walther's has made them in the past, but I don't have any of those to compare them, so I'll go ahead and do this one for you. Normally I'd have an unboxing, but mistakes were made and I lost my unboxing video. So I'm just going to show them to you out of the box because I didn't feel like putting them back in the box just so I can pretend take them out again. As you can see, the cars themselves are actually kind of simple. So to go looking for details, we have to look at something other than the side of the cars. It looks like that got damaged by the packaging a little bit. No big deal there. You can see that it has pickups. Um, I'll talk about the lights here in a little bit. The interior looks pretty nice. It's uh, two color, I'm pretty sure. The, the aisles are a different color and the seats look like they're made out of leather or naga hide or whatever they used back in the day. Rapido has probably some of the most detailed bottoms and you can see here, there's just a lot of piping, a lot of conduits. You can see a lot of the air, you know, the air reservoir, that kind of thing. So if you're the kind of person that's into this type of thing, this car will really work for oh, most Rapido. Um, sometimes it's a bit of overkill. I've had some piping fall off before and it kind of causes a mess and it breaks off kind of easy. But again, you like this thing, then this is definitely a product line for you. Okay, here's the cab car. The only difference is it's just the cabby front end. That's about it. And it does have rear marker lights and front headlights. Has the horn up there. That's the only difference that I can really tell. I suppose if there's a flaw here with the cab car and with the consist in general is that it uses knuckle couplers and I notice knuckle couplers just don't push as well. I have a lot of European consists and of course those are cab card and they're designed to be pushed but of course they use European style latch couplers or like the Roco vertical coupler that kind of thing. They push much better. In fact I'm often able to push those at full speed and I mean full speed. I just can't do that with these cars. The locomotive I've paired it with is this ALP44 by Atlas. It's very nice, very, very nice. It's, it's, it's really turning into one of my favorites. It has these guys in it for one thing, and I always like it when there are people driving it. It's just a lots of details, these nice grab irons. I think the ALP44 actually adds some nice contrast, but it, you know, it has these corrugated sides, whereas the Horizon cars are just flat. And so I, I think it's a really great pairing here. I think the colors match up great. Of course, part of it is probably that um, New Jersey Transit is actually able to pass on color and Pantone information. So it's no wonder they look good together. Everything was absolutely flawless, except for this one coupler that was just a little bit tweaked. That, that's the only thing. And it's really not that big of a deal. I can, it won't let me actually clasp them together on the rail so I just have to kind of push this one to the side and get them to lock that way. Being a premium manufacturer, Rapido has lights and these ones you turn on with a little magnetic wand that they give you and you tap the top and it pushes through a magnetic switch and voila there you go you have some lights. With the cab car you also have to use the wand to turn on the marker lights or the front headlights and you have to kind of figure out where to do that don't quite like this system as much. I think DCC now can handle this, or I'll talk about another system here a little bit later, but this is just really quirky, and when one's on, they both can be on. I just, I sort of don't get it. Sitting next to it is the Atlas control car I have for these double-deckers, and it uses DCC, and because it uses DCC, it can also have a speaker in it and you can control the directional lighting just by controlling the direction of the consist. And I, I think it works a lot better. You know, if, if you look, it's no problem. Turn each one of them on and off. Okay, let's just go ahead and do the with the Comet car here. We'll go ahead and get our little wand and try to turn on the... God, stop. God, for the love of God! Okay, I'm not really a big fan of the wand thing. 
I can kind of see it working for the lights, and I think all premium cars should have lights, but I think for things like the directional lights, then it, it's just unnecessary. I think what they might be trying to do is kind of split the difference between people who run DC and DCC, something like that. They figure out ah, this can work for both, but uh, even there, they have some options. Um, for instance, all right, the first example is made by Marklin Trix, and this is Trix, so it's DC. As you can see, it's a cab car. And on the rear, which is kind of the front truck, depending on how you look at it, you can see that there's this friction plate, and the friction plate grabs onto this axle here. And as you move it, the switch moves up and down, and that contacts one of these arms here, and that determines uh, which direction you're going to go. So uh, I'll show you from the side here so you can see this a little bit better. Now get close up again. If you move the wheel one way, the arm contacts this other electrical contact, and if you move it the other way, it pushes down. So this is a system where I don't have to use this wand to try to get the direction right. This one's made by Rocco. It's also a cab car. It uses a similar uh, system. Basically, it has this rotating wheel here on the axis, and as you can see, there are two electrical contacts, and depending on which way the wheel is rotating, that will put the contact uh, in position for one of the two switches on either side, and that tells the cab car whether it's running forward or reverse, so you don't even need DCC for either of these because they have a system built in. And in fact, they work pretty well. If you look, you just pull it backwards, push it forwards. You don't have to sit there and screw around with a wand to try to turn one thing off and the other thing on. Uh, I don't know if either of these companies have a patent, and that's why uh, Rapido couldn't come up with their own, but my guess is they could have come up with a system that's similar to this. And it works great, and I don't have to get frustrated and have a bad day. So I think the only thing that there is to do is to go ahead and tear down the cab car and replace all of that with a four-function decoder. And if I do that, and when I do that, I, I think I'm definitely going to do it. I'll go ahead and post a video on how to do that. Hopefully that'll help those of you out there who are wanting to do a similar thing. Well, there's not a ton more to say about these. I think there are people out there who have a better uh, handle on this as far as what little lights run on or what the windows look like at a certain time period and whether these are prototypical. I don't worry about those kinds of things. I just worry about whether I like it and whether it looks good running on my track. I just don't dig that deeply into prototypicality. Well, that's about all I have for you this time. Hey, I'd love to read your thoughts down in the comments. I'd love to read your comments. I'd respond to them. It really makes me feel part of the community. Until next time, happy model railroading, and I'll catch you later.